thank you so much for being here. Welcome, welcome to a last ditch effort to rescue a Rhynchostylus gigantea crossed with a Vanda cerula. These are Tolumnias, <laughs> not to be mistaken with the blooms of my gigantea crossed with cerula, but because they are so pretty, so much prettier looking than this. I decided to open the video with my little Tolumnias. So what is going on with this orchid? Well, not much. I've already removed her from her hanger just to save some time. And I wanted to show you how deep the water level was of the hanger where she was touching the base right here and then attached at the top there as well. All right, so for the last eight months, this orchid has been this deep with her stem in water constantly. It, I tried full water culture, but it was stem only. No roots even decided to grow down, despite the fact that this bucket had so much water in it and the roots were lower in the bucket with lots of humidity. And what do I have to show for? Nothing. Well, something, of course, but <clears throat> this is just not acceptable. Eight months after having had disaster results with anything Rhynchostylus in my collection, I've tried to grow Rhynchostylus gigantea. After the third one, I said, no, no more. It doesn't work for me in my super hot, dry climate. Imagine we are in November today and I have 25% humidity. Look, I have a root tip. In the process of removing the hanger, I nipped off a little root tip right there, which is a shame, typical. But I have another one up here, which has some mechanical damage from the tag. All this is just nonsense. One trying to grow here, but you know what? Even the hottest months of the year, which Rinka Stylus really love, Vandas really love. And I thought this would be super high humidity right in here the black reflecting some of the heat, making it even hotter, more steamy. And this, yeah, this is, yeah. Right, so <laughs> that's where the bottle comes in. Semi-hydro setup. Now, do I have any hopes of this working? No, absolutely not. If a bucket full of water permanently, constantly, with the roots being down submerged in the whole ambient atmosphere of that bucket. If that wasn't the kicker, then I doubt very much that this will be as well. But I've got to try. I have this bottle and I was hoping that she would fit. She does to a degree, but I have a nice root in the back here. Oh, that's going to be too long because you see, I want these roots in this container kind of thing, not covered with lecker more enclosed humidity, making the space smaller, raising the humidity level. And that would mean I'm going to lose the tip of this root. Well, I've already busted one root tip. I may need to cut this one back. Yes, I hate doing that. Every root is precious. But on the other hand, this is not working, not at all working for me. And I feel terrible. She has also been subjected to some scale issues but everything's been treated, all the dots and things, that's all dead. I've wiped her down this morning to the best of my ability. Also applied a little bit more garlic alcohol for any little scale babies that think they can take over once she gets into the setup. But what I'm going to have to do first is cut the stem again. The beginning of the season 2021, I did cut the stem already so that she would be nice and low in the bucket and that all these roots would have a nice, hot and humid environment around them. That, that didn't do much, did it? Oh, beautiful root tip. First of all, let's just get this stem a little bit shorter and see what we're up against. You see, that looks really, really nice. So the orchid is fine. It is my climate that is causing big, big problems. Oh. Well, I'm going to let that dry for a bit and I'll be back. 
So while we wait for that stem to dry from the cut, I just wanted to talk to you about my frustration with another vandacious orchid I have here that is clearly mislabeled. It came to me as a green hopper. I didn't care about the name, I liked the blooms. However, having had this orchid now also for over three years, not knowing what its cross or makeup is, I can tell it's got rhynchostylus in it just because of the exact same behavior regarding the lack of root growth or the reluctance. Let's say reluctance, because you can see roots are trying, but they stop. For a long time, it was in a sort of a similar setup like the other one that we're dealing with today. Very high humidity around the roots, etc. until Michael McCarthy told me, you still have an orchid top left. Why don't you put it into an orchid top with some lava rock? And that's what I've done. In the meantime, it looks like it's getting a little bit better. It has issues, clearly. It came with a lot of fungal spots, so I treated it with copper the way I always used to in order to get them in check. So these are all leaves how it came with. I lost quite a few leaves at the base, probably because of the copper treatment, but needless to say, it looks like it's starting to grow a little bit cleaner, even though there is spotting on the leaves. So I don't even know if this orchid is possibly virused and all these factors, I have no idea. But again, back to the dynamics of a Rhynchostylus gigantea in my climate. Hot, dry, no humidity. This orchid has now been in this pot for the entire hot season of 2021 and it was doing quite well. Some of the roots that started to extend at the base went into the lava rock and you would think, you would really think it would continue to grow. It has stopped and I never moved this orchid because of abrasions and the risk of abrasion could stop a root tip from growing. I am tiptoeing around anything to do with Rhynchostylus. That includes my Neostylus Lusneri. Root growth, when I see it, I become so vigilant with regards to how often I move it. What do I do with it? Is there wind in the way because I don't want the orchid wobbling? All of that is what I take into consideration when it comes to the location of these Rhynchostylus crosses. And you can see how high the humidity is in this pot. Throughout the summer, it was always flushed every day, fresh water in, and the saucer also has water in it. A little bit less now because I'm in the colder months of the year, and I just want to make sure that there's enough water so that there's enough humidity within the lava rock. So not as full as it would be in summer. But you can see the same problem that I have here with regards to happy roots. I had this orchid also in full water culture for a whole year, and the roots down here were actually sat in a tub with just water or sometimes fertilized water as you do. And they didn't even extend. It absolutely baffles me that I can't even get an orchid that is submerged in water for an extended period of time to be happy to grow roots in my climate. So this is just a little side note while we're waiting for that stem to dry to show you how Rhynchostylus in my climate are just not compatible. And the only person I have to blame is me. I overestimated my competence with these orchids. I thought I live in Southern Spain. It gets hot here, whoop de doo I did not factor in the humidity. So there's that green hopper, quick update. Similar problem as with my Rhynchostylus gigantea crossed with cerula. Right, so let's check and see if that stem has dried now. Okay, so we've given it a hot minute to get a little bit dry around the stem. Let's see. Let's see if we can't fandangle this one in. <clears throat> I think this root, I'm going to have to cut it back a bit. You can see it's trying to branch underneath. Maybe that would be encouraging if this tip is gone. I don't know. I don't know if I mentioned in the earlier clips whether I have any high hopes for this working. To be honest, no, I don't. I am just doing this now because it really is a last ditch attempt to get this orchid to somehow accept the fact I mean well, you know? But, um, I would like to, of course, have the leaves going with the shape of the bottle, but I'm just trying to see if I can work it this way, make a compromise to save that root. And if I keep turning it while it is now somewhat in the bottle. Oh, where is it snagging? It's snagging somewhere. There is somewhere that it's not happy. 
I'm going to try and get it in as deep as I can. Uh, it's snagging on this one. There we go. Maybe I've cracked that. Uh, but trying to get it in as deep as I can because I want a lot of that ambient humidity around the roots. If you want to lean. Oh, here we go. Maybe I don't have to cut, but you see, <laughs> too high. But I'm going to have to accept it for what it is right now because I'm not cutting that stem anymore. What I'm going to do now is pour more leka in because the roots down here quite often were totally submerged in water. So they are used to a very permanently wet environment. So let me get some more leka. Let's see. The velamen is really tough on these roots. I'm not concerned about bashing it. This is also not the time of year for this orchid. It's far too cold. Even indoors, I have 15 degrees Celsius as a low temperature indoors. It doesn't like that. It would prefer anything upwards of 25 degrees Celsius. So we've got that to deal with. But you know what? It's this or it's going to be history. And if I can at least limp it along a little bit, then I would rather prefer doing it this way. Right, seeing as it is a semi-hydro setup, <laughs> I'm going to move the holes away from all the telumnias that are hanging underneath me so that it all drains towards the back or to the side so we can see the water draining out. And just fill up the reservoir. <laughs> oh my goodness, when I see cerulas on the interwebs, I really, really would love to keep this orchid happy. But yeah, doing the best I can. She came to me in bloom. It was sensational, loved the blooms. And I would like to see them again. But three years later, we are not getting anywhere fast with this orchid. And I'm hoping that maybe this will help. I don't know, let me know what you think. It really is the last hurrah from my side to see if I can get it going. Fingers crossed. I appreciate your time. Thank you very, very much for watching. <laughs> Updates will follow. Good, bad, indifferent. We'll see. Have yourselves a beautiful day, but on one condition, please stay safe and take care. Bye.